Hey guys, welcome to the channel if you're new here. Um, if you aren't new here, you might recognize that this is not my normal recording studio. Uh, this is a just a bedroom in a rental house. Uh, long story short is that uh, our house got struck by lightning about eight months ago. We should have been back into our house by now, but it just hasn't happened yet. So there's there's been headache after headache. So uh, I had hoped to be back in my house by the time ISS Vanguard arrived, which is what I'm playing today, but it, it just didn't happen. So I decided to go ahead and, and just continue playing and hopefully uh, the audio and video quality are good enough uh, for you guys to enjoy it. And um, if, it, if it's not, then it doesn't matter. I'm gonna enjoy playing it no matter what. So uh, <clears throat> with that, I just wanna dive into it. I wanna get started. Uh, I'm super excited about this. I've, I backed it when it first came out. I love Awakened Realms games, all of them, and a sci-fi theme is right up my alley. So it was a, it was a no brainer for me. So it's here. Uh, it's set up uh, and uh, let's let's dive in. So first it comes with this uh, ISS Vanguard comic. Uh, so I'm gonna read through it. <clears throat> uh, I don't I might uh, try to edit in like the official read through of it. Uh, we'll see what happens, but if not, I'll try to do pictures or, or something in the in the post. So uh, but this is the, the prologue of ISS Vanguard. <clears throat> Just imagine for a second that inside you, there lies an answer to humanity's biggest question. We are not alone in the, or are we alone in the universe? Who created us? Is there a creator at all? What would you do with this knowledge? I can tell you what we did. My name is Morgan Wayman, and here's my story, or rather our story. It all started in a laboratory. There's this thing we used to call the junk DNA for decades, in fact, most of our genetic code is leftovers from our messy evolution from some dating back to the first single cell organism. Scientists were certain they served no practical purpose. All it took was one researcher who noticed mathematical order in the chaos within the oldest sections of our DNA shared between every living thing on the face of the earth, there was data. Our data contained coordinates pointing somewhere within our galaxy, dubbed divine coordinates. As humans, deep down, we're all explorers, even though sometimes it takes a little push to wake us up from centuries of apathy. We just needed a new glowing purpose on our horizon. Now we had one, reaching the divine coordinates. This purpose spurred some of the most talented people to move from work on new social apps, tech gizmos, or financial algorithms into space engineering. We could almost feel the star map burning within every cell of our bodies. But all of this wasn't enough, at least not in our lifetimes. Humanity did not have the technology to reach such a distant place, or at least we thought so. Once again, all it took was one person. This time, an informant risked everything to bring a light bring to light a secret hidden deep in Siberia, an alien ship, or rather its wreckage. Once again, the world reeled. How could something so vital stay under wraps for decades? Whose ship was it? And why didn't they contact us? Were they behind our genetic star maps? The worldwide pressure on the Russian government to release the wreckage was unprecedented. In the end, they relented. The ship was transferred to a new global space exploration agency. After years of concentrated efforts, we restored the ship drive. We could not replicate its alien core, and we did not fully understand it. Still, we knew how to put it to good use. An unprecedented construction project began. Nearly every country on Earth contributed. contributed. The objective was too tantalizing. The potential returns too big to ignore. For the first time, the combined potential of our entire species began became focused on a single target. It was breathtaking. We fused the drive of the wreckage with our cutting edge technology. ISS Vanguard was born, a human made miracle with an alien heart. Today, we finally stand ready for the greatest adventure in human history. We, we go now to learn the truth of the divine coordinates. Oh, that's so cool. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, in summary, we, we found, 
uh, coordinates in our DNA and we found an alien spaceship wrecked in Siberia and we combined our our passion to reach that reach those coordinates with the alien data to it sounds to me like uh, to create a one-of-a-kind ship there's one chance of reaching this destination and we are that chance so uh, that, that's such a cool story premise oh, my, my like GM game master mind is just going crazy with all the possibilities of that but uh, it sounds so cool um, so we're gonna play the tutorial first uh, I think that's a good good ease in it kind of shows us how to play um, so I'll probably step through that fairly slowly and then from there uh, we'll, we'll go through the ship phase, which I've heard about, uh, uh, and I'll probably not do a whole lot of editing, but then uh, on continued campaigns, I'll probably edit the ship phase down quite a bit and just uh, show you what, what I decide to do and any rolling that's involved, success or fail or, or whatever, but I'll probably try to get that edited way down. We'll, we'll see how it goes because I've never done a ship phase before, so maybe, maybe it's pretty quick and painless and I won't have to do much editing anyways, but uh, anyways, uh, so I've, I've kind of set up everything. Uh, I set up, uh, I followed all of the rules in the rule book about, about organizing all the cards. Uh, and since I'm playing solo, uh, they, they said that we are, we're playing with two people and we have to choose a mirror for one of the, one of our, one of our people that we're going out with. So I've chosen a mirror, uh, Zainab, and it's cool because we're not we're not sure exactly um, what what our rank ups are or anything at this point, but but the back has uh, some little personnel information on on the 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 character. So uh, Amir is a science expertise. Uh, there's talk that Amir is really a convicted criminal who took his twin brother's place in the ISS Vanguard mission. And uh, looking at the picture of him, I. I can I can definitely see that he looks he looks a little little rough around the edges. So uh, so we're sending out Amir as our science officer, and then our recon officer is uh, uh, Joppe. I'm gonna hack I'm gonna hack all these names. Just I'm sorry in advance. Uh, Ulrich uh, and his his little uh, personnel file is uh, he expertise is physical. Uh, he's a great cook, often complacent complicit when it comes to stealing leftovers from the canteen and preparing dinners with lab ex equipment. However, his petty crimes are mostly forgiven. Who doesn't love crispy protein bars toasted over plasma torch? Uh, awesome. So, so those are our two characters that we're going to be playing with in the tutorial. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else? Is there any other stuff? I've, I've, I've prepared all the section dice. Uh, I've prepared all the section cards. Uh, I've prepared the planet board. Uh, per the directions, so you don't have to. Uh, the The directions seem pretty straightforward. Um, I didn't have any any issues getting it all set up. There wasn't too much confusion or, or anything like that. Just a couple times I had to to uh, to uh, turn to the first page where the components uh, are showing, but um, yeah, other than that, it's good. Uh, it looks like we we have to read some logs. Okay, so let's let's re do the logs first. So uh, we're gonna start. Let's call it a YouTube playthrough here. Perfect. And I'm going to use this because the audio narration is awesome. So, uh, campaign plus operations. If you want to play the tutorial. Man, the audio on this is awesome. Report, what's going on? Sir, 
We're detecting a massive cloaked object directly in our path. The calculations show we're three weeks from impact. Begin evasive maneuvers. Sir, this object is several times larger than our solar system. A diameter of nearly 200 astronomical units. Ooh. Considering our current speed, I'm not sure we'll be able to adjust the course in time. How could we miss something as big? The object employs some active cloaking technology and does not seem to have any gravitational interactions with nearby systems. Sergeant Nahi, are the section leaders awake? Yes, sir. Get them up here and lock down the bridge. Not a word of this to anyone. We don't want to cause a panic on board. Awesome. <laughs> just, just awesome. That that's so cool. So <clears throat> we're evidently we're very close to our destination, and then suddenly something comes up on our scanners that was cloaked somehow. That that's so cool, uh, and it's this huge structure. So all right, so let's hit proceed. Okay, so follow the set of instructions on page eleven. Okay, cool. So that that was log one. <clears throat> so we. Red log one. Uh, so now we gotta go to log five. Capcom, this is the away team. We're approaching the target. Our short range scans detect an outer shell of unknown carbon allotrope that seems to absorb all emissions. We have no way of knowing what's inside. We're already crunching your data, away team. I'll let you know if we find anything. No wonder we couldn't detect this thing. It was literally built to be invisible. Should we attempt the landing? No. We're not sure how resilient the structure is. Make a closer flyby and deploy a sample gathering drone. Roger, Vanguard. We're... Wait. I'm detecting something on the surface of the sphere. A metallic object embedded in its shell. Look here. The surface around it is cracked. Almost as if it crashed into it. It's turning toward us? We're hit! Mm, yeah, I was just gonna say, we're about to be shot down. Anchored on the sphere! Abort. Do you copy away, team? Abort mission now. Okay, so <laughs> that's bad. Alright, so my thought process is. So they have, they said that it's something not built into the structure. It almost looks like it crash landed. So. Maybe this, there's somebody else made it made it here before us, and they're trying to keep anybody else from from finding this place. Um, either way, it seems like we crashed, so uh, we'll figure it out. Okay, you've crashed on the surface of the alien object. Continue reading the prepare section, dice, and cards instructions on page twelve of the rule book. Rule book. Okay, so I'm do, I've done that. Log twenty now. So it looks like <clears throat> from from setting up the uh, from setting up the the map, I guess, for lack of a better term, uh, there's there's two different crash sites, and uh, a mirror is crashed here uh, on the lander's front half, and then uh, Jop is uh, located in the twisted wreckage. So it looks like the back of the lander, maybe. Uh, so that's that's kind of where we're at right now. But let's let's listen to log twenty. Continue reading Amir's first action instructions on page 15 of the rule book. Okay. <clears throat> so, so we're going to just step through this. I, I, I think it's pretty hand-holdy, but that's okay. We're, we're learning the rules, right? So, uh, planetary exploration is divided into a series of rounds, each round starting with the crew member with the start token and going clockwise. Each crew member takes a turn to perform two action. Since Amir has the start token, uh, whoops, I guess he doesn't. Okay. <clears throat> he takes the first turn of the game. Give each player a reference card. Okay, so I got reference cards. Uh, so a crew's turn consists of the following two steps. Action steps. Perform two actions. 
in turn step. Flip turn token, draw and resolve an event card. There are five different actions you can perform. Travel, rest, prepare, lift off, special action, once per turn. Amir would like to perform the travel action to move to section five. However, the icon in the top right of the POI indicates that the travel from this location is not allowed. Okay, all right, so this, so we want to move here to section four. Did I get that upside down? To sector five. Should he be here? Did I get that wrong already? I did get that wrong. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> either way it looks like, okay, that one doesn't do it either, so, okay. So he can't. Uh, <clears throat> instead, he decides to perform the special action also printed on the POI, force the bulkhead open. Okay, this is a special action that involves a dice check indicated by the two icons to the left of the name. Okay, so we're, we're doing this, force the bulkhead open. It's a special action because of the the uh, the arrow and a dice check because of the dice roll. Dice checks are one of the main mechanisms of ISS Vanguard and are fully explained later. To resolve the dice check, follow the scripted instructions below, which will go through the process step by step. Don't worry, you will be making your own choices soon. The steps to resolve the dice check are summarized on the reference card. Okay, so we gotta choose the dice. So at the start of the dice check, the crew member performing the check takes any number of dice from their crew board into their hand. To estimate the number of dice you need to get the desired results, look at the rows below the name of the special action. A row marked in green is a positive outcome and results in the action being successful. A row marked in red usually indicates the action has been unsuccessful. However, in this case, the red outcome space has an arrow pointing to the green outcome space, which means that even if the action fails after resolving the red outcome space, you then resolve the green outcome space. Looking at a mirrors of, okay, okay, let's just look at that real quick. All right, so we have to get um, a like strength icon, a shield icon, or a compass icon. Looks like a compass maybe. Okay. <clears throat> and if we get either of those, it looks like or, I think the slash is an or, then we gain a victory uh, success token and and then replace this card with P101. And if we fail, we roll roll like one of these dice, I guess. Um, I'm not sure what that is yet. And then and then resolve it. So okay. Look at Amir's available dice in his crew board. He has no dice with any of the icons needed to get the green outcome. The three depicted to the left of the green outcome. So he will choose to roll no dice and just accept the red outcome. Okay, however, Amir doesn't like the idea of rolling the danger die, the red, the red outcome. Okay, so this is the danger die, okay? <clears throat> Take the red and blue dies indicated in the image above from Amir's crew board onto the board, okay? So we're going to take a red and a blue. Although these dice do not have any of the icons needed for the green outcome, each dice has a vanguard icon, uh, which is this like which counts as any other icon if you roll at least one vanguard icon you will succeed okay usually other crew members in the same sector may assist by choosing one of their dice to be included in the dice check this will be explained later in the tutorial for now any other crew members in sector one chooses not to assist assist so yeah we got we're on our own Add injury or danger dice is step two. The step can be skipped for now as a mirror has no injury dice and the special action does not indicate that a danger die must be rolled. Okay, okay, gotcha so far. At this point, you would probably roll all of the dice in your hand, okay? So that's these. Together, all dice rolled by the player and any assisting players from a single roll pool. For this tutorial, instead of rolling the dice, place them in your roll pool above your crew board so that they show the results depicted in the image above. Okay, so we're, we're basically pretending like we rolled the dice and we got we got this this outcome. Okay. The icon the red die is an accident. Often this will result in a negative effect as indicated by the special action, but this is not the case here. No accident icon appears on the special action. 
The icon on the blue die is a basic icon. This result has no effect on its own, but it could still be useful in some situations. Okay. Um, so it looks like we're, <clears throat> we're trying to get, we're stuck in the rear section of the, the ship and we're trying to open this bulkhead to be able to get out. And we, we're, we, we're attempting to and we've, we failed, it looks like. Okay, so it, it explains some dice rules. So this is our available dice. Our dice pool is above, which is what we roll on, and then we put it in the spent dice afterwards. Okay, so now step four, modify results. During this step, the crew members play section cards and use other dice modifier effects, such as certain equipment cards, to change the results of their dice and meet the requirements of the desired outcome. Okay, uh, you choose to play your trial and error card. Okay, so we've got this trial and error uh, section card. It allows you to move one die. Oh, you know what? I totally did the wrong person. I'm supposed to be doing a mirror. So let's do this. Here we go. All right. <laughs> See, I've already messed up. Uh, so now we're doing trial and error. It allows you to move one die from your roll pool to your spent pool to turn one other die to a chosen result. Amir chooses to move the red die to the spent pool to change the result of the blue die to a vanguard. Okay. Okay, so then I guess this this is then you know, in the discard pile here. Okay. You can treat the Vanguard icon as any of the three icons required to obtain the green outcome. Uh, the uh, arm, the shield, or the compass. It doesn't matter which one, any of them will do. Okay, cool. After resolving your section card, place the card face up in your discard pile to the right of your crew board, okay? Uh, note, other crew members in the same sector may assist by playing one section card from their hand, even if they didn't choose a die during step one. You already have the results you need, so no assist is required, okay? Step five, check for dice combinations. Skip the step for now, okay? Dice combinations will be explained later on. Resolve injury or danger. This step can also be skipped because there's no injury or danger, okay? Resolve special effects. Skip this step for now. Special effects will be explained later on in this tutorial, okay? <clears throat> All right. Mark outcomes. During this step, you determine the outcome of the action and indicate it with a marker. It will, be, it will be resolved later in the procedure. There are various types of special actions. Force the bulkhead open is a type of special action with various outcomes based on the result of a dice check, each on its own row. This special action has two outcomes, red and green. So here's the green, here's the red. Starting from the top row and proceeding down, Check to see if you meet the requirements as depicted to the left of the outcome space with dice in the roll pool. If you do, move those dice to your spin pool and place a marker on the outcome space. Okay, so we're starting at the top. We, we, we have succeeded, so we put a marker here, and then we move this to the spent pool. If a marker was placed, proceed to step nine. Only one marker bit can be placed on a card during the setup. They're in the step. If a marker has not placed, check the next row. Okay. All right. <clears throat> do, 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 do. In this step, you would move all remaining dice to your roll pool, uh, from your roll pool to your spent pool, so there's none left. <clears throat> you don't have any left in the roll pool, so that step is skipped. Uh, resolve outcomes. During this step, remove the marker from the marked outcome space and then apply the effect of that outcome. In this case, the green outcome. Okay. So then we remove this marker and then we resolve that step. So it looks like we gain a success token, which looks like it goes up here. And we're placed with card P101. Um, P101 right here. Okay. Oh, okay, outer surface. Oh, right here. Outer surface. We can't reach the uh, other part of our lander via the surface, but we could descend into the honeycomb structure of the sphere. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Congratulations, you freed yourself from the wreckage. 
This in ends Amir's first action. The basics of a dice check has been explained. Injury dice, danger dice, assisting, and special actions. With tracks, with tracks will be explained after, later in the tutorial. But for now, let's move on to Amir's second action. So, <clears throat> so the first action is done. I believe we flipped this icon over, so now we have one action left. Right? Okay. Move to the... All right, Amir's second action. Amir now finds himself on the outer surface card. This POI has another special action printed on it. However, even though each crew member performs two actions per turn, they can only perform one special action. Okay, therefore Amir must choose a different action. Okay, all right, so we can't, we can't do this, uh, take surface samples because we've done it a special action once per turn. Okay, I get you. Unlike the previous POI, this card does not have the, the block icon, uh, which means we can perform the travel action and move to another sector. This is what he chooses to do next. The travel action allows you to move your crew member from one sector to another sector <clears throat> along a connecting path. Looking at the planet board, you can see that there's a path between sectors one and five, and there's an arrow pointing in both directions. This means that travel is possible in both ways. Okay, so we can move here to here or here to here because of these each path depicts one or more icons along the path. You must resolve each of them when you travel along a path. In this case, the icon is the travel icon, which indicates you must look at the current global condition in the bottom right-hand corner of the planet board. Okay, so I believe this is global condition here. Um, and, then, <clears throat> and then here is this so travel. Uh, we, we move one dice to our spent pool, it looks like, or roll a danger die to move to a connected sector. Um, oh, we never we never read our mission uh, card either. Whoops, I must be skipping a step. Okay, scattered across uh, disparate sections of an enormous alien sphere, we must have find a way to regroup. Objective, regroup in sector four. Okay, all crew members need to be present in this sector for the, at the same time. Hint, whenever someone enters sector four, don't forget to go to the log listed there. Completion, when you fulfill this objective, you will be asked to discard this mission. Okay. Cool. All right, so we had to re regroup in sector four. Um, so that's our end goal. <clears throat> okay, the global condition instructs you that to resolve the travel icon, you must spend one die, move it to the available from available dice to your spent pool, or roll a danger die and look up the result in the danger die reference card. Okay. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's say that Amir decides to take the risk of rolling a danger die instead of spending a die. Roll one danger die and compare the result to the the T entry on the danger die reference card. Okay, here's the danger die reference card, and it looks like there's a bunch of references. Uh, here's the T. Okay, so let's roll a danger die. Oh, nothing. Okay, cool, so I guess nothing happens. <clears throat> if your result is listed, apply its effects. If your result is not listed, there's no negative effect. Okay, in either case, complete your move. Uh, T is used only in this tutorial, and the only two effects possible are as follows. Okay. Okay, we can gain an injury if we had rolled the wrong thing, it looks like, or lost a die. Regardless of the result, move a mirror to sector 5. Since there is a log number listed in this sector, resolve it right now. Okay, so we, we move a mirror here, and then we read log 227. So cool. Place POI card P109 face up in sector 5. So P109. <clears throat> okay, there's P109. Now we do a face up. We're on carbon mesh. There is no obvious way forward, only a labyrinth of tiny passages. So a special action is it looks like you roll, roll some dice and a danger die and to squeeze through. Okay. Cool, but it looks like I think that's going to be the end of our turn because we've, we've done one action for the special action to get out, one action to move. So I believe we have no actions left. But let's let's read here. <clears throat> 
Amir's turn is now over. Flip his turn token to the turn ended side. Normally at this time, the crew member must draw and resolve an event card. However, event cards are to be introduced later in the tutorial, so skip that for now. Uh, so then it says go to log 50. Okay, so we, we turn this turn available card uh, thing over. It says draw an event, turn ended. But evidently we're not supposed to do an event card yet. Uh, so we just go to log 50. Okay. Uh, continue reading the end of Amir's turn instructions of the rule book and then 50. Away team, exploration report 1B. When I woke, the cockpit was dark and filled with smoke. A strange glow seeped in through the cracks of the fuselage. Whatever this turret brought us down with, it was still eating through the hull, melting steel like butter. I thought Ooh. about the oxygen tanks and supplies in the cargo bay below the cockpit. If we were to survive until the rescue, they needed to be saved. Agreed. <laughs> That kind of sounds like alien with their their uh, their blood like eats through the the um, the ship. Uh, that's awesome. Okay. <clears throat> Continue reading the second crew member's turn instructions on page nineteen of the rule book. Okay. <clears throat> cool. So it looks like we're gonna, we're going to try to save our supplies. Any crew member in sector two also faces a difficult situation. The melting hole is endangering volatile oxygen tanks. The POI must also depicts the block icon, meaning no travel from this sector is possible until the emergency is dealt with. Okay, so yeah, that, that icon there. The second crew member should choose the Save the Supply special action visible in Sector 2. This also requires a dice check, but this is resolved in a different way to the one we saw on Amir's turn. Instead of outcomes with requirements, each outcome has a track associated with it. Okay. This type of dice check represents various activities with progress that can be measured. Instead of trying to roll a fixed requirement, each of your dice will give a chance of progressing one of the tracks. The first time you progress on the track, place a universal marker on the leftmost space of the track. Okay, each subsequent progress moves the marker one space to the right. When the marker moves into the outcome space, the large space to the right of the effect, progress it again. Progressing it again will not move it further. The effect of that space is applied at the end of the dice check procedure. Okay, <clears throat> so so that was one question I had uh, when I was thinking about it. So when you succeed, the first time you succeed, you place a marker here. You don't place a marker here and then succeed, succeed, succeed. It's the first time you succeed, you place a marker, so. Okay. <clears throat> Progress on a track is saved from one turn to the next, uh, i.e. one crew member could progress a track on their own and another crew member crew member progress more on, later on. You can even make some progress, travel elsewhere, come back, and then continue. Okay. The two special effects of this action are resolved from left to right. First, any accident icons you roll will progress the red track, and then those dice will be moved to your spent pool. Okay, so that's, that's uh, this right here. Then, each section die you have remaining in your roll pool will progress the, the green track. Okay, so it looks like any any roll, so I can roll any dice, and it, as long as it's not an exclamation mark, it progresses the green. Okay. Two rooms always on the top row first, from left to right, then next row, and so on. Okay. The process for resolving the dice check is the same 10 steps, so let's go through them again. Choose dice. To maximize your chances of making as much progress as possible, take all five dice from your crew board and place them in your hand. Any other crew member present chooses not to assist. Okay, as before, this step can be skipped for adding injury and danger dice. So we're doing all five dice. We're we're gonna we're gonna expend ourselves to try to save our supplies. Okay, roll all the dice in your hand. This time, use the actual results you rolled. However, if you rolled three or more accidents, re-roll all of your dice until you roll fewer than three accidents. Okay, this is only for specific roll and only during the tutorial. Okay, so it's it's holding our hand just a little bit. So let's roll these dice. Okay, it looks like one accident and then a vanguard. Okay, cool, so. All right, so what do we gotta do? So we got, we got four successes, but then one accident. So it looks like that, right, hold on, I'll just, I'll, the read, I'll read the directions, okay? <clears throat> 
Uh, okay, so if you rolled no more than one accident result, all is good. Skip to step five. Otherwise, read on. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so it looks like yeah. <clears throat> if we if we had rolled, <clears throat> excuse me, another accident, we wouldn't have enough dice basically to to progress this track all the way to success. So, but since we did, I can't remember which one was there, um, but. Since we did, then we are going to succeed. So we skip to step five. Check dice combinations. Step six, resolve injury or danger dice. Step seven, resolve special effects. The special action has two effects. They must be resolved from left to right. First, for each accident you have in your roll pool, progress the red track once and then place the die in the spent pool. Okay, so we, we uh, progress the red one two and then move it to my spent pool. Okay. Remember, the first progress places the marker at the start of the track, and each other progress moves the marker one space to the right. Then for each remaining dice in your dice pool, progress the green track and then place that die in your spent pool. Okay, so cool. So, so we go one success, spent pool, two success, three success, four success. Okay, so now we move it here. <clears throat> Mark outcomes. This step is skipped for dice checks with tracks. Okay, so we, we, we marked our outcome. Spent, spend dice. Move all dice from the roll pool to the spent pool. So that's already done. Cool, okay. Uh, this, this makes sense so far. This seems really straightforward. <clears throat> all right, resolve outcomes. Uh, check each track from top to bottom. If the marker is in the outcome space, remove the marker and apply the effect of that outcome. Okay, if you're applying the green outcome, first gain a success token. So that goes up here. All right. <clears throat> oh, we're up, we're up here, sorry. I am in the complete wrong space. Okay, so first we gain, gain a success token, and then we replace with card P102. So it looks like these go away now, and we go to P102. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong, wrong sectors. Uh, okay, recovered supplies. We don't have to worry about food or oxygen for a long while, okay? So it looks like we can use an aid station or rest and recover. Okay, cool. Oh, we need to move to this guy. <clears throat> okay, removing all markers on the previous POA card back to the supply. If you do not make enough progress to reach the end of the green track, try again next turn or another crew member could try, okay. In the rare case that you progress both tracks to the end, because they are resolved from top to bottom, the outcome of the green track would replace this POI with another card. The red track would then not be resolved. Okay, cool, so that's good. So if we succeed and fail, we just go to work top to bottom, and if the first one resolves first, then the, the second one doesn't. Okay. <clears throat> As you'll see on the reference card, performing a rest action, oh, sorry, the first rest action, Performing a rest action reduces the number of supplies you have. Supplies are your most vital resource, representing oxygen, filters, water, and everything else you need to explore alien worlds. However, in this tutorial mission, your supplies are unlimited, as you, as can be seen on the global condition card. Okay, you have unlimited supplies in this tutorial. When you rest, <clears throat> okay, so while well, I skip to steps, so your crew member is now out of dice. As you've seen, dice are required to perform most of the special actions. One way to refresh your dice is the first is the rest action. Okay. <clears throat> when you rest, you refresh half of your total number of section dice rounded up. You currently have five dice in total. In this case, all your dice are in your spent pool. But in the future, you may have some still in a, the available dice slots. You count the total number of dice on your crew board Half of five rounded up as three, so you refresh any three of your dice. To refresh a die, move it from your spend pool back into a matching colored dice slot on the left side of your crew board. Remember to place them with the side with the markings in the four corners facing up so that you can identify them easily. Okay. Finally, as the last step of the rest action, draw one section card. Okay, so let's do that. Um, does it say any specific... Okay, it's, it's just telling me to pick, so... Um, I think, so let's see, so these are just normal, so I'm going to, I'm going to re refresh this one for sure, this one for sure, and let's just do a blue, since I'm not sure exactly what, what each one does specifically, but uh, that seems good, so that, 
like specific successes, we may need those. So rather than just general, general success. So sure, looks good. Okay, and that's our, oh, sorry. Uh, we flip our action over for the, for saving the supplies. And then our last action is our rest action looks like. Finally, as the last step of the rest action, Rest action, draw one section card from your deck onto your hand. At rank one, the maximum number of section cards a crew member may have in his hand is two. So we've got two already. If you now have three cards, you must discard one card from your hand to your discarded pile on the right side of the crew board. Okay, so we draw, draw a card and we've got these two. Uh, so now we have three cards. So we have to uh, decide which one we're we're keep which one we're getting rid of. Okay, uh, born lucky. Uh, Any time after rolling a danger die, turn it to the chosen result. Ooh, that might be good. I think I might want to keep that one. During a dice check, turn one red to the chosen result. Ooh. And during a dice check, re-roll one. Okay. And then there's these special actions too. Um, I'm not sure what they do. I haven't learned about them yet. So I, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discard Dash, and I'm going to keep Athletics and Born Lucky. So it looks like we can modify roll results for, for more successes. So that's those that looks good. Uh, perfect. Um, now the next time you need to draw a card, if your deck is empty, which it is, uh, shuffle your discard pile to make a new deck and place it to the left of your crew board. Okay, so next time we have to draw, we'll shuffle and then put it, put it there. Okay. Second crew member's turn is now no over. Flip your turn token to the turn ended side. Okay, so we'd be basically drawing two event cards per per round uh, at the end of each character's turn normally, but we're not doing event cards right now uh, because of, because we're in tutorial, I guess. Again, normally you would draw and resolve an event card at this time, but skip the step at this point in the tutorial. Okay, remaining crew members, which you don't have any, but let me just read it real quick. Depending on the number of crew members in the away team, there may be other crew members who have not yet taken a turn. If you have three or more crew members, they follow the steps below. Once all players have taken their turns, move on the round completed part of the bottom of this section. Okay, so they basically do some steps. Okay, one full round is now completed. Go to log 59. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> I have to read? <laughs> All crew members now have their turn token on the turn ended side. This ends the first round. From now on, if you have a full control over your choice of actions, before continuing the game, browse through the sections under continuing the tutorial in the rulebook. There's no need to read all of these sections in full right now. Only read them the first time you need them. Okay, so continue reading the continuing the tutorial instruction on page 20 of the rulebook. Once you've completed the first round of the tutorial, you are now on your own. However, there are a number of additional rules you need to understand before continuing, which are listed below. Ensure you are aware of these before continuing, but many of them only need to be read when you need them. Depending on what has happened in the tutorial so far, you may have already read some of these sections. Also refer to the icon glossary at the back of this rulebook for any new icons that haven't been explained yet. Okay. Please note, during the tutorial, Crew members do not draw event cards at the end of their turn until mission M02 has been revealed. Okay, so until M02 has been revealed, we don't do event cards. Okay, help me remember, guys. Uh, so there's reference cards, as mentioned earlier, that's here. Turn order, okay. Uh, convert abilities. Each crew member has a convert ability depicted on the top left corner of the crew member card. During a dice check, you may use your convert ability, but whenever you spend a die to treat a basic uh, result of your color shown as if it were the depicted icon, the color of the die is unchanged. Okay, so it looks like uh, Jop can roll a green and he can convert it to a, to a, uh, a strength icon, and then uh, blue success can be converted to like this like solar system. Um, so that's, that's cool. Okay, <clears throat> so travel effects, immediate special effects. Okay, then there's this rank up card that we need to worry about once we have three success tokens. 
So we'll read that. So there's the, here's the dice combination section. So let me read that real quick. <clears throat> During step five of the dice check, you may use the dice combination effect of any section cards in your hand if you meet the requirements with dice in the roll pool. Okay. The results of the dice in the roll pool, including dice from assisting crew members, match the dice combination requirement in a section card in your hand. You may move the matching dice to their owner's spent pool to activate the effect described on the card. Okay, after doing so, discard that card face up in your discard pile. It is possible to activate the effect of more of more than one section card in that way, but dice used to activate an effect are moved to their owner's spent pool immediately and cannot be used to activate another card or an outcome. Okay. In this tutorial, there are only two different dice combination icons. There are many more in the campaign. So a standard success icon, I guess, a standard icon, any die showing a basic result, okay, and then an A plus an A, two dice showing the same icon. Remember that a Vanguard result counts as any icon, or an accident uh, result cannot be used for dice combinations. Okay, okay, cool. So um, we'll worry about there's assisting and some other stuff, but we'll worry about that when we get there. So let's 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 dive in. So uh, I guess these turn availables get flipped over, and then we can have either member start um, <clears throat> okay it looks like we can squeeze through uh, here in sector five in this carbon mesh and it says if we succeed we take your crew member and any number of assisting crew members from this sector and place them on sector four so we'd move them up to sector four okay so let's let's have um, let's see if there might be some danger there. So I'm wondering if maybe we should hit send job in first. Um, uh, let's see here. Do we want to use the aid station? Discard one injury card. We don't have any of those. Rest and recover. Refresh four dice. Draw two section cards. Uh, we don't really need to. Uh, so let's let's move. So uh, we moved from here to sector four. We just have to spend one die. So let's let's spend blue for drop. Okay, and then we have to read. Uh, go to log three eleven. Away team exploration report one C. The darkness and silence of an eons old structure enveloped me. The carbon mesh formed small tunnels their network sprawling under the pitch black surface of the sphere. I set up a radio beacon to notify the other survivors of my location and sat there in the dim light of the flashlight, trying not to think too much about who these corridors were made for. Okay. Are all crew members in sector four? No. Keep taking turns until all crew members are here. You must read this log entry each time a crew member enters this location. Okay. All right, so basically, Jop is gonna park there. I wonder. Okay, looks like, looks like there's nothing there, so it wouldn't help us to go there yet. I wonder if that gets replaced at some point. Um, I wonder, we could go here too and harvest alien components. <laughs> Um, oh, we get we used one action to move. Um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe we should just park there. Although we could take surface samples, we can go back to the outer surface and take some samples. Um, we have unlimited supplies, so we can rest and kind of take our time. So let's kind of try to farm this in my in my mind. Let's try to farm this as much as possible and get as many many things as we can. So yeah, so let's let's have Jop as his second action. Let's have him move here. So we have this icon, so we travel. So we use one dice or roll a danger die. Um, so we can use this card after rolling a danger die, turn it to a chosen result. So let's just roll a danger die. <clears throat> okay, so that's one thing. Okay, so it looks like we have to have two or three, uh, like that, three or four, 
of that, but we got this one, so it looks like nothing, nothing happens. Okay, cool. <clears throat> okay, so that was our second action. So we're hanging out in the control room, um, but uh, it looks like we can't do anything yet. Oh, whoops, and this improved treatment, I left. It's down here. Okay. Uh, so that's that's his turn. The job is done. So now I have two actions left for Amir. So let's have him move back. So Amir is going to spend a die. <clears throat> okay, and we need we need a, a pickaxe, um, like a solar system, or a computer. So we need the blue. Okay, so let's let's get rid of a green, or we could roll. Yeah, let's just do it. Let's get rid of the green, and then so now we're back on the outer surface, and then for our that's our first action. So then our second action, uh, we can roll. So what if we fail? So it looks like if we fail, we roll a danger die. Um, <clears throat> So we only have, we've got some vanguards. I wonder if we should just try it. Let's, let's try it. What's the worst that could happen, right? So Amir's going to roll a green and a blue, see if we can get either a vanguard or a solar system. Ooh, yeah, there's a vanguard. <clears throat> okay, so, so we're taking surface samples. It looks like we, we gain another success token, which we're going to resolve this rank up. Uh, and then we go down, gain unique discovery one. Uh, so I guess that's this. <clears throat> Exotic carbon allotrope. Ship management, when unloaded, place research project R01, alien materials in the awaiting envelope. Okay, so I don't know what to do with this yet. Uh, we're just gonna keep it here, there. So he's recovered surface samples uh, and then Gain unique discovery one, replace with card P000. So let's look at that. Looks like that one. Oh, there's a bunch of those. I wonder if they're all the same. Oh, there, there is. They are the same. Okay. Nothing interesting. So we have we have explored that area completely. Perfect. Okay, so now <clears throat> he has no actions left. His turn has ended um, and then so now we don't do we don't draw an event because we're still in M01 so yeah let's do this rank up <clears throat> so rank up incomplete tutorial place with this side facing up to increase your ranks after a planetary exploration your team will need to fulfill a specific task listed on the rank up card and gather enough success tokens. In this exploration, you only need to gather at least three success tokens. Once you do, flip this card to the completed side. Okay. Rank up completed. Cool. Okay. So and then I, I think it said during the ship phase something happens. Oh, I forgot to. These go uh, to this. Cool. So we have found a unique discovery. We've ranked up. We are we're killing it killing it guys oh one thing I noticed uh, says read this section only when you instruct it to gain unique discovery one unique discoveries are found on certain planets and are placed face down on the planet board during setup when you're instructed to gain a unique discovery flip the card over unique discoveries are normally stored on your lander but for this tutorial place it above the planet board as in the indicated space so whoops I'm supposed to put oh, found discoveries right here If you've been instructed to gain a unique discovery and you've already gained it, gain a success token instead as printed on the unique discovery space at the bottom right of the planet board. Cool. Okay, so now it's the next round. So we get to turn these over um, and then, okay, then let's stop, start with uh, Joppa. So let's, we're in the control room 
we're gonna harvest but the machinery here is dead and without power okay so let's harvest alien components uh, but first don't really have the right icons but we can uh, we need a, a pickaxe or a wrench um, but what we can do is using athletics during a dice check turn one red to the chosen result so I could just roll this die and then use that card and change it to a vanguard so I think I might do that let's, let's see if we get lucky first no so we're gonna use athletics turn one red die to the chosen result so we're gonna choose turn it to the vanguard so then this gets discarded and then we put a marker here okay then we uh, I guess we go this goes to the spent pool this gets resolved and we get to refresh one die so let's refresh that same die here it is okay and then we go to log 230 Okay, huh, so maybe multiple races? Hmm. Uh, gain unique discovery one, which we already have. To gain unique discovery one, if the card is still in the unique discovery space, reveal it and place it at the indicated found discovery space above the planet board. If you already gained it earlier in the tutorial, gain one success token instead. We'll take it. <clears throat> okay, close. Perfect, great, so that's his first action. And then his sex, second action will be to go up here. Uh, we need to uh, roll the danger die. So let's roll a danger die. Nothing happens, perfect. We don't have to use our born lucky card. And we're back in 311. I think, I think we have to read it every time, but I don't think it changes. Away team, exploration report one, C. The darkness and silence of an eons old structure enveloped me. The carbon mesh formed small tunnels, their network sprawling under the pitch black surface of the sphere. I set up a radio beacon to notify the other survivors of my location, and sat there, in the dim light of the flashlight, trying not to think too much about who these corridors were made for. Okay, yeah, it's the same same thing. Uh, all crew members in Sector 4, no. Keep taking turns. Okay, alright, so <clears throat> that was his second turn, so he... Uh, harvested alien components then moved back so now his turn has ended we'd normally draw an event card but we don't need to uh, so now Amir is going to move here and let's see oh we can't we can't move uh, so let's let's rest as our first action so uh, one turn is going to be spent resting we're going to recover three dice so let's just recover so let's get all these in their correct orientation. So let's do a red, a green, and a blue again. Again, I'm not sure exactly how to use these dice at this point, so I'm just kind of going for a spray across the board here. Uh, okay, so now, now, now for our second action, we'll move here. I forgot about the resting, so that sucks. Uh, and then, um, so that that's our second second action, and we either need to roll the danger die or move a die over. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna move a die over, then we'll rest again uh, on our next turn, and then we'll recover three dice, and then our, our second action will be moving up here. Okay, so that's, that's the end of our turn. Oh, I forgot, uh, we, we rested, um, so we actually draw this card, which is calculated risk. Anytime, discard an event card you just drew without resolving its text. Okay, cool. I don't know what those event cards do exactly, but maybe sounds like some of them might be bad. 
Uh, okay. Cool. All right. Uh, so that's the end of the round. Um, I, th I don't think anything else happened, so we, we flip these over. And we're going to have um, a mirror start, I think. So, um, so he's going to rest. So we'll recover three dice. Perfect. Then we're going to attempt to scree squeeze through. So this is a special action. It requires a danger die and then a die roll. And we're looking for a compass or a computer, which we don't have either of. <clears throat> So, I wonder if we should just, um, uh, so we can convert, but that's not going to work either. Uh, let's just roll three dice and see if we can get lucky with a vanguard. We can re-roll any one die. Um, so yeah, let's, let's do that, and we got to roll a danger die too, so. Uh-oh. So that's no, no successes, and then also we've got, that looks pretty bad. Um, that's four, it looks like that's three and that's two, right? Yeah, so nothing happens on the danger die. And then... We can re-roll one die, so let's go ahead and use improv improvised treatment, and let's re-roll the green. Oh, dang it. Uh, oh, we have to go to log 112 now. Oh no, why did I do that? <laughs> Whoops. Uh, okay, well, let's go to log 112. stuck now now what, would, what do we have to do you failed however in ISS Vanguard this isn't always a bad thing some negative outcomes may open up to new possibilities and storylines that are only available after a failure okay <clears throat> choose one option slowly work your way down uh, we spend three dice which we don't have three dice uh, because these these are basically spent now I think Place your crew member and any assisting crew members in sector four. Okay, we can call for help. If, if there's another crew member in this sector, they may spend dice to help you. If they do, proceed. place your crew member and the crew member who helped you in sector four. Okay, use tools to cut yourself out. Roll a danger die after applying the results of this roll. Place your crew member in sector four. Okay, I think that's the only option is to use tools to, to get us out. So we'll roll a danger die. One, uh, I believe that the, for the T, one is nothing, so good. <clears throat> okay, so we, we continue to squeeze through anyways. Uh, oh, sorry, use tools to get yourself out. Okay. Roll danger die after applying the results of this roll. Place your crew member in sector four. Reminder, during your turn, whenever you enter a sector that contains a log redirection, you should immediately read this log. Okay. Away team, exploration report one. The darkness and silence of an eons old structure enveloped me. The carbon mesh formed small tunnels, their mm. network sprawling under the pitch black surface of the sphere. I set up a radio beacon to notify the other survivors of my location and sat there in the dim light of the flashlight, trying not to think too much about who these corridors were made for. Okay, so now, are all crew members in Sector 4? Yes. Away team, exploration report 1D. As the last member of the away team appeared in the distance, we felt instant relief. The mission started in disaster, but we were alive. We regrouped, we had some supplies, and we were not far from the designated landing zone. It was time to get to work. First, we needed to make 
sure that any rescue team sent after us wouldn't suffer the same fate. Yeah, yeah, because that weapon that shot us down is still out there, right? Uh, I, I also thought maybe we should have gone here first before we before we uh, regrouped, but but oh well, kind of too late now. Your first mission is now complete. Uh, gain uh, a success token. Okay. Place point of interest P105 technical corridors in sector four. Okay. P105. Okay. What or who uses the spider web of passages? Okay. Remove mission card M01 from the game. Dang it, so we're going to have to start rolling events. Okay. Take the top five cards from the tutorial tech B. Oh, which I think are these, the events card. Yep. Shuffle them and place them face down near the planet board as, as the event deck. The next time a crew member completes their turn, read the events section in chapter 11 of the rule book. Okay. So, so the so the thought is so we either uh, crawl under the mesh and place an explosive underneath the the weapon and explode it and the mesh underneath it, or we go up to the surface and and uh, and sneak up to the the weapon and place a charge on it and just blow up the weapon. So the the sneaking up and placing a charge and blowing up just the weapon is more risky. Um, but then it sounds like the Dyson sphere. That that was was kind of that we we almost ran into uh, was would be destroyed and that it could be visible from outside. So, um, hmm. I mean, this is one of those questions where you wonder if if this decision affects the whole entire campaign, right? Because, um, huh? Yeah. Like, I wonder. Because the weapon itself is alien, right? Hmm. I say I say we do the more risky approach, go across and try to blow up just the weapon. I think that's that's going to be our approach. Okay. Okay. Sector three contains a cannon which brought down your lander. A POA card will be placed here based on your next decision. When exploring alien wor worlds, your away team will often come. Upon tough choices that can shape your campaign. This is one of them, okay? Blowing up the sphere under the alien cannon is faster and safer, but it will compromise the ability of the sphere to cloak itself, making it easier to find for all other potential travelers. I mean, but the, I was gonna say, what if we fail and another ship is, dis, is dispatched from Earth, but we're kind of a one-man show again. Like this is our only chance because there's that only one alien technology. So it would be from, from other, other, other solar systems, maybe. Okay. Surgically disabling the cannon will take more effort and be riskier. Okay. Okay. I think we want to approach and disable the cannon. Take the top card from tutorial deck A, mission card MO2. Okay. Read it aloud and place it face up in the mission space board. Secure the crash site. Vanguard knows our last coordinates and will surely send a second team to investigate. Unless we find a way to silence the cannon that brought us down, they are, grave, they are in grave danger. Find a way to neutralize the cannon in Sector 3, okay? 
place card P107 in Sector 3 and continue the game. Uh, oh, here's the P, P107. Bulbous Cannon. <laughs> the installation that downed our ship will prevent any rescue efforts. Someone needs to disable it. Okay. And before you attempt to reach the cannon, consider resting. Cool. Okay, so I think that's the end of Amir's turn because we rested and then we moved, right? So now it's Jop's turn. So I think Jop's gonna rest, so he'll get three dice back. That'll be one of his turns. Oops. Oh shoot, uh, I forgot. Um, Amir's turn has now ended, so we need to draw an event card. Here we go. Uh, if no icons match, discard this card and progress all time tracks by one. Okay. As mentioned earlier, when a crew member ends their turn, they reveal the top event card and resolve it. Reveal the top event card from the event deck. If the event deck is empty, shuffle the event's discard pile to form a new deck before resolving the top card. If none of the biome icons on the card match any biome icons in your sector... Oh, okay. Okay, so this, this is the icon, so it matches. Follow the secondary effect if none of the biome icons on the card match any biome icons in your sector, follow the secondary effect of the card printed in the top of the, printed at the top of the card. In the tutorial, the secondary effect of all event cards is to progress all time tracks by one. Ignore this effect if book condition G01 flickering lights is not in play. If it is in play, read sector below on time tracks. Okay, all right, so it looks like we these match, so we do this. A group of black automatons stampede through the structure, oblivious to our presence. We better get out of the way. Uh, so we can roll a danger die or spend a blue and a red die. We don't have a blue and a red die, so we're gonna roll a danger die. So that's four. Uh, that does nothing for the tutorial, so we're, we're good. Okay. Okay, so I don't really remember where, where, where I left off. Um, I think maybe Jop had just um, done one action to rest, right? So I think we need to pull more, one more uh, section card here. <clears throat> Please be a good one. It's going to be during a dice check, turn one red die into a chosen result. Perfect. Okay, so I think one action was rest, and then, hmm. <clears throat> And the other one's gonna be move up here. <clears throat> so we roll a danger die. Just one, which is nothing on the tutorial. So, okay. So now, um, so now his turn is over. <clears throat> we could draw an event. If no icons match, discard this card and progress all time tokens by one. Yeah, it doesn't match, so so we discard it and uh, progress time tokens, which we don't have any time tokens at this point, so good. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, we go next round. I think I'm just going to start with Jop and see if I can finish it up. So we need a success and a strength. <clears throat> So I think what we're going to do, um, I think we're going to do three. So I think we're going to do both the reds because then I can change one of them into anything I want. And then a green just to kind of, hmm, I wonder if I should do, I wonder if I should do that. Let's do that. Let's do four. Oh, I'm going to do a danger die too, it looks like. <clears throat> Okay, ooh, yeah. Two vanguards, two successes, and nothing on the danger die. All right, so the vanguard could be our, our, our muscle, and then the uh, green could be our success. 
So uh, it looks like this gets put here, right? And then these get moved to the spin pool. Is that right? And then, then we resolve this. And these aren't used, so they get put in the spin pool. And replace with card P03. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is a multi process thing here. Ah, I get you. Um, okay, so now we have to disable the cannon <clears throat> or damage the cannon. Uh, so we've got one action left. We only have one die left. And we can't modify it at all with our section cards. So I think for his second action, he's going to rest. We're going to cover th recover three dice. So I'm going to do these three. And then I think that's it. So... Uh, that's the end of our turn. <clears throat> uh, we do an event. If no icons match, discard this card and progress all time tracks by one. There's no time track, so it gets discarded and there's no T up here. Um, and then Amir, what's Amir going to do? <clears throat> I think Amir is going to spend one action to rest, so we recover three. And then we'll spend one action to move. I don't think I don't think um, Jop's gonna need help, so let's just move to here. Uh, so this is gonna be um, either a danger die. Let's run, roll the danger die. Nothing happens. Okay, then we go to log one thirty. Is Mo three your current mission card? No. You're getting too far from your objective. You cannot progress deeper into the sphere until you complete your mission. Oh, okay. Move the crew member back to section, section four, then continue your turn. Oh, bummer. Okay, so we can't really do anything. Um, <clears throat> so that was my action to move, I guess. So now, now I'm over. So now we do another event. Uh, if no icons match, they do match. Structural collapse, delicate carbon mesh breaks under your feet. You spend a lot of time freeing yourself. Progress all time tracks by two. Okay, we have no time tracks again, so irrelevant at this point. Um, okay, and then turns done. I think we're gonna start again with Jop. We're gonna try to disable it. So what we can do is we can basically <clears throat> roll a single red die and we can then turn it to a vanguard and then make it whatever we want with uh, with this athletics if we don't do anything. So I think that's what we're going to do for his first action. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to use uh, this athletics card. During dice check, turn one red to the chosen result. We're going to turn it to a vanguard, which is a success, and we're going to use it for the computer. We gain a success token. <laughs> and we replace with P000 and go to log 415. <clears throat> Oops. All right, nothing of interest, so 415 now. Awaiting exploration report 1H. The thick armored panels were easy to detach, fortunately. With the turret's machinery exposed, it became even more apparent that it was a piece of much cruder, different technology than the rest of the sphere. Okay. This, coupled with the fact that the turret had forcefully dug itself into the sphere with long claws, led us to conclude the turret was left by some other race who discovered this sphere a long time ago. Hmm. Whoever made it, it is clear that they wanted to prevent other species from studying this place. It's good we disabled the cannon before the rescue team or Vanguard itself entered its firing range. Okay, interesting. <clears throat> so somebody was here before us. Um, we don't know who that is, human, alien, whatever at this point. Um, somebody was here and somebody wanted to keep 
other people from finding this place. So they were hoping to damage ships as they come closer. But we've, we were able to disable it. So we're evidently the next one or the next one that succeeded and didn't get destroyed. Um, but okay. Vanguard, this is the away team. We regrouped and got rid of the cannon that brought down our lander. No casualties. Any ETA on the rescue team? We're already on our way, away team. ETA, 36 hours. Hold on. 36 guys. hours? Do you have enough supplies to last that long, away team? Yeah, lucky for us, most of the stuff in the lander survived. We'll be cutting it close on the oxygen, but we should be fine. Excellent. You can proceed with your mission then. Please repeat, Vanguard. You want us to keep searching this place? Of course. There's nothing else you can do for now. And we still need to know more about the structure before Vanguard gets too close. The scans you've provided indicate there's some sort of a room within the sphere. Hmm. Near your location, filled with what looks like some alien technology. Okay. Take a look and see what you can make of it. Copy that, Vanguard. Proceeding with the mission. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so we we'll continue. Take the top card from Totoro Deck A, Mission Card M03. Okay. Replace your current mission card with M03. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. There's nothing on M02 that needs to. Yeah. Okay. The Vanguard is still barreling towards the alien structure. We must discover what's on the other side and what its purpose is. Objective, fully explore Sector 6, which is here. <clears throat> Hint, read the descriptions of the locations on the planet board. Revealing the final POI of Sector 6 requires an action elsewhere. If you get stuck and don't know what to do, go to Log 600. Okay. Okay, so one action was him doing that. Um, and we okay okay all right let's close this first perfect all right <clears throat> so yeah so now <clears throat> he's got one action left so he's going to use that to move here he rolls the danger die which is nothing so good so that's his final turn. So now, draw an event card. We get the last one. Okay, so T does match. So time passes. Progress all time tracks by one. Okay, all right, may not have been revealed, so cool. All right, let's just shuffle these guys up. Put them back down. Okay, so now <clears throat> Amir has a turn. So Amir is going to move here. Uh, he's going to roll the danger die. Nothing happens. I think we're getting really lucky with the danger die. Uh, so now let's go to 130. So I think M03 had to be revealed. Is M03 your current mission? Yes. Away team, exploration report 16C. One of the technical corridors eventually led us to a small balcony attached to the inner part of the sphere. We gasped, looking upon the enormous space contained within the object. Before us, a derelict of an entire solar system floated inside the sphere, oh. its sun red and tired. We took preliminary readings and scans. It seemed apparent that the matter of this system, and probably many neighboring ones, was repurposed to build this enormous structure. But why go through all this trouble only to hide an old red giant and some lined out rocks? The inside of the sphere is covered with solar panels aiming at the sun, yet all corridors and terminals we've seen so far are dead. Did something break in the circuitry of this part of the sphere? <clears throat> and can we fix it? Okay. Okay, so the, this big huge sphere that was cl completely cloaked was hiding an entire solar system? Uh, very cool um, and mind-blowing uh, what kind of technology they must have had to, to accomplish that task uh, which is crazy um, but let's, let's let's continue I guess place a random card p00 face up in this sector okay looks like I only have one left so uh, nothing of interest gain one success token man we are gaining success tokens 
how many have we got so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven success tokens. That is awesome. All right. Okay, so that's one action. And then for his other action, I guess we're, we're gonna go up to these convex panels here. So we'll, um, we'll just, uh, well, we have to just spend a die. So let's spend this blue one. Actually, two green and a blue. Yeah, let's just do this blue one. Okay, so that's our last action. So now we're gonna draw an event. <clears throat> no icons match, they do match. So structural collapse. The delicate carbon mesh breaks under your feet. You spend a lot of time freeing yourself. Progress all time tracks by two. So we don't have any time tracks at this point, so we're okay. Um, and then, <clears throat> so, let's see. So from reading the description and reading what I just heard, <clears throat> I'm guessing what's going to happen is that we're going to have to power up the control room and then <clears throat> once we've powered up the control room then we can we can do things. So so I think um, what Jop is going to do is he's going to go ahead and move down here as kind of a preparation. It looks like I can handle this because I've got two green and a blue. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens. Um, did I? I rested at some point. I don't think I shuffled my section cards. Let me do that real quick, and I'll draw one card because I don't think I remember to do that very good. So all right, I'm gonna pick this one. Uh, during a dice check, move one uh, dice from the roll pool to the owner's spent pool, and then turn another to the chosen result. Perfect. Okay. All right, uh, so yeah, so we, we move here. Now uh, we have to uh, roll, roll a danger die. Nothing, okay, uh, so that's one action. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, you know what, did I move him already? <laughs> oh no, I'm so confused. Uh, oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. Uh, Let's just finish his turn. So his turn, we'll finish him up by, by resting here because we've already gathered alien components. We'll rest. It might be cheating a little bit, but, but I mean, um, we, we got unlimited supplies anyway, so, so let's just draw an event card. <clears throat> okay, does the T line up? Yes, it does. Rushing service boss, a group of black... Uh, Automatons stampede through the structure, oblivious to the presence. We better get out of their way. So we can roll a danger die or spend two die. So I'm going to roll a danger die. Nothing happens. I have a feeling that this isn't the norm here. Most of the time, yeah, it looks like uh, most of the time stuff stuff happens on almost every single roll. So we're not going to get that lucky again. But okay. So now, now we're all done, right? Now the whole the whole round is done, I believe or we'll pretend that it was. So now Amir's turn. <clears throat> so we can inst install a power coupling. Um, so I think, uh, let's see here, we can, so if we do just two dice, during a dice check, move one die from the roll pool to their owner's spent pool and turn one other die to the chosen result. So we can just go here, refresh a die, and then and then succeed. So let's let's do that. So let's uh, let's do a green and a blue. Actually, let's do a green and a red. We're gonna roll. Okay, so two successes. So now we're gonna use trial and error. So we're gonna move one die to the spin pool, and do this die to whatever we want. So we're gonna move it to the vanguard, which will be a uh, wrench icon, so then we refresh one die. Uh, so um, I think we're getting out of order a little bit. So this is a success here. So then we move this over, then we, ref then we trigger this, so we refresh one die. Uh, I'm gonna refresh red. Um, and then 
Let me go to log 424. Okay, here's where time tokens come in, I bet. <clears throat> global condition card. Okay, take the top card from the tutorial deck A, global condition card G01, and place it face up on the global condition slot in the bottom right of the planet board. Okay. Global conditions like G01 contain effects that influence the entire planet board. They also contain the effect of the travel icon that changes with each new card. Please note that the travel icon effect is now different than it was on the previous card. From now on, traveling over a car, a dice check, okay? The card contains a time track. Read the time track's rules in chapter 11 of the rule book, then continue reading here. The time track on G01 represents the time that the power is on. Once the time token reaches the end of the track, the power goes out again. Discard G01. At this point, you'll be back to the original printed global condition. Okay, you might as go back to sector seven to switch the power back on. Okay, place POI P06 in sector six. Okay. Strange console. It's the first thing resembling an operable machine that you've seen in this place. Okay. Take a look at the special effect of the access the console special action. You gain progress on the given track by rolling the depicted icons. However, remember that special effects are resolved from top to bottom. Therefore, before resolving any dice, with those icons, each pair of green and blue dice rolled will progress the red track, so avoid rolling both green and blue dice together. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, so then we need a shield, a compass, a gear, or a, a planet solar system icon to progress. Okay. Okay, so that was his first action. Okay. Okay, so it looks like we need a compass icon to move. Ooh. Okay. We refresh to spend dice and move to a connected sector. Boy, that's, that's going to be hard, um, especially since we don't have any. <clears throat> All right, so Jopay might be our, our best and only bet because we're going to have to get <laughs> progress a long ways to get, get there for, for a meter or so. Um, okay, <clears throat> um, so I think on his Final. Should he try to move? Yes. Let's let's do that. So let's let's. Uh, or should he stay there just in case the power goes out? Because if the power goes out, he'll have to move all the way back. Let's keep him there. Uh, he's so he's going to rest. So he'll rest, and we'll recover those two dice. We recover this section card, which is improvised treatment. Uh, then that's our last action. Our turn is now no longer available. Uh, so let's read the directions on the uh, time track because I'm not sure how to do that yet. Various times during the game, you'll be instructed to progress all time tracks. In the tutorial, this only becomes relevant once G01 is in play. Okay, time tracks work in a similar way to tracks on special actions. Whenever you are instructed to progress all time tracks, if there's no time token currently on the track, place one on the leftmost, sp leftmost space. Each subsequent progress moves the token one space to the right. Once it reaches the rightmost space, uh, resolve that effect. Okay. Whenever you are instructed to reset the time track, remove the time track token from it. For example, the time track on G01 requires four progress. The first progress places the time token on the track, and when the token reaches the final space, you go to log 505. Okay. Cool. So, um... So the turn's ended, we need to draw an event card. Okay, so uh, it matches, so time passes. Progress all time tracks by one. So it goes to the first one here. Okay, 
All right, looks like that's it. Uh, all right, so we've got limited time. A mirror radios into Jop. You got limited time, guys. You gotta, you gotta get the get this console working before the power fluctuates and goes out again. Uh, Jop says, "I got it." Uh, so he, let's see. So I think. So we are. We'll, we'll progress the red track if we do a, a green and a blue. So let's just do four um, dice, two red, two green, and see if we get, we're gonna have to get basically um, vanguards to progress. So let's see what happens here. Oh no, nothing, um, nothing at all. So, no vanguards. So I guess th then that that's it, right? And that's that's the final straw here. Um, there's nothing we can do. So this just gets moved to the spent pool, and then that's it. Oof, oofda. Um, okay, and then for a second action, I guess he'll rest, uh, recover three die. Uh, we're gonna recover this one. Okay, then we draw a section card. Uh, during the dice check, we roll one die, which that might help a little bit. I really wish we had this athletics one right now. Uh, okay, so that's our final action here. So we flip it over, because we can't do another special action this round. And we just rested, right? So now we draw an event. Time passes. So we progress the time token. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. Um, oh, it's gonna take forever for a mirror to get down there. Oh, we have the exact same <clears throat> amount of chances, I think. Oh, geez. Um, okay. This is the next round. Yeah, because we, we both have one of these, like, make a dice whatever we want to, um, but, man, okay. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's have drop a start, drop a start again. Um, should he roll everything? Uh, we'll progress the red by one, but I think, I think we'll be okay. So let's roll all four die. Nothing again. Um, during your dress check, we roll one die. Let's re-roll. Let's re-roll red here. Actually, let's re-roll re blue. There's a vanguard. Okay, one single vanguard. Uh, and then uh, we roll a green and a blue, so we progress red by one. Okay. Because yeah, the vanguard can be anything. Uh, okay, so now these go move to the spin pool. Um, and then, I guess, so that's one turn, one action. Then the other action is going to be rest. Right? Oh, like it might be over by the time we... Uh, okay, so we're going to rest, right? So we're going to get these two and this one. How about that? Okay, and then we'll shuffle this up. Please get the red, the red card. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> athletics, perfect. Okay. So now, so Amir can change blue successes to the that, but man, I mean, he's so far away. It'd almost be better to switch places if we lose, because our strength one's not going to work, but these are better. So we have a better chance, I guess, with, with a mirror uh, if we fail this. But <clears throat> Okay, so our turn is over. So we're going to draw an event card. Okay, so it does match. 
eerie voices. A strange radio disruption comes from the other side of the sphere. Within the deafening white noise, we seem to hear some human words. Okay. So we have to lose, lose a die. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, all right. Oh, man. So now what? So at least we haven't progressed the time track. I think we have one more chance of this. Um, and if it doesn't work, then I think what we're going to do is we're going to swap swap places with Amir and Jop. So let's have Amir make his way down. So uh, so he spends one die, right? So yeah, I guess the travel icon is different, but we spend one die to move here. We'll just spend the blue one. Uh, so that's one action. And then we're going to spend the next action moving here. So now we have to... Um, uh, so we have to... Let's, I guess we, have, we need a vanguard icon, right? Because we don't have any compass icon. So let's just roll... Let's roll all four. There's a vanguard. Um, oh, so that's interesting. <clears throat> oh, we would just we would. So if we get this die <clears throat> and only that die, then we would we would not refresh to two dice. But we do since we have this. So this goes to our spent pool. Now we refresh two die. So we're going to refresh. Uh, let's refresh these two. Okay. So that's both of our actions. <clears throat> so let's draw an event. Okay. Eerie voice is a strong radio disruption, so we lose, lose a die. All right. <clears throat> Don't progress the time track, so that's the biggest thing. Okay, so we reset again. Man, this feels like I'm under a time crunch for sure right now. Like, get it done, get it done, let's go. We got one more chance at this before the power goes out. Um, so I wonder, I wonder if we should, oh yeah, Amir's not gonna make it because Amir's gonna need to rest. Um, Yeah, so let's have Jop go first, and then Amir will move the rest of it down, and maybe we'll get one more round if we're super lucky. All right, so <clears throat> Jop's going to go. He's going to rest on his first action. So he's going to rest, recover three dice. Okay. Then he's going to access the console. So we're going we're gonna to roll all the dice, and hopefully we get at least, um, so we need one, two, three vanguards. So we can make one vanguard, but this is our final chance I have a feeling. Oh, okay, so there's one vanguard, and then we can use athletics to turn one red die into a chosen result. So we'll turn this one into a vanguard. So that's two successes, one, two. So we need one more success to make it. Um, okay, so it's the end of Jop's turn. Uh, so we draw an event. Time passes. So we progress the time marker. Okay, um, and then, oh, shoot. Uh, so, I think we're gonna have a mirror rest. So we'll recover three die. And then we're gonna have him move here. Okay, so then we have to roll roll some dice. <clears throat> if we get um oh man, we've got this discard an event you just drew without resolving its text. Oh yes, let's do that. So Let's actually, I missed this calculated risk, so 
as time passes, uh, discard an event card you just drew without resolving its text. So just resolve it. So that's what we're going to do. So we, we got a little bit more time. So now we move down here. So now we have to do uh, our travel. So um, uh, let's roll a red and a blue. No, we don't want, let's do red and green. Mm, we have one action left. Let's do red, green, and green. Okay, so that's a Vanguard, so that's a success. So we refresh two dice. So we're gonna refresh these two guys and then move. So we are able to move here. Okay, so that's his last action. <clears throat> and then we flip this over, draw an event. Now, now we hit time passes. Okay, so same, same result. Um, perfect. Okay. Now it's our turn. So we've got one, we've got one more, one more chance before the power completely craps out on us. So, hmm. So let's have, should we have Amir go first? Yeah. So let's have Amir go first. He's going to rest. So that's his first action. And we get to grab one of these cards. Okay, I'm going to grab this card. During the dash check, move one from the roll pool to the owner's spent pool, and then turn the other one to the chosen result. Okay. So. We just need one more success, guys. One more. <clears throat> so I think what all we need to do is roll these two blue die, right? Because we can, during the check, we can make it whatever we want. So we can make it this or make it a vanguard, and then we succeed. We're not doing a blue and a green. Okay, so let's do that. Right, so we got it. We didn't even have to use the card. So that progresses the time track to here. <clears throat> if you guys can see it, it progresses the time track to the end. And we go to log 200 now. So let's do that. Welcome guest. Some sort of a welcome message with instructions and pictograms. Some of it in Chinese, some in English, some in French. And this part, I don't even know what this is. They were listening to us? But how? The Earth is too far away for even our first radio transmissions to reach this place. That's a question for later. Now, see that? It seems the sphere could open up. They wanted visitors to get inside. What for? There's nothing there. Just an old, destroyed system. They must have a reason. Let me just try this. And this. <laughs> just push me the buttons. Vanguard. We're opening the gates. We read your away, team. Excellent job. We see an entire section of the sphere, several hundred miles across, slowly moving. We should Same. be able to steer into the opening. Good job, away, team. The rescue ship is on its way. We'll meet you inside. A transmission from within the sphere? Okay. <clears throat> oh, a video? Run it again. A full handshake. This is the middle of those. Next step, join. A long time ago, we began a race. All started at the same time. Thousands overwhelmed. You need them to enter and claim. Go first. Prepare for what comes. We're sorry, 
for stealing your future. It was the only way. Enter. Claim. Enter? Enter what? It all started with a string of data. Coordinates. Discovered inside the non-coding DNA of every living cell on Earth. It took decades to build a ship capable of reaching them. When we arrived, we were welcomed by a pitch-black cloaked Dyson Sphere. Undetectable until we almost crashed into it. Inside, a skeleton of a solar system. Its matter stripped away. Dead rocks bathed in the radiation of an old red giant. Then, something came from within the star. A signal. A patchwork of Earth's old transmissions glued together into something new and thrown back at us. The glitchy part at the end. What was that? A fragment our AI couldn't read. Likely, uh... No. Wait. I've seen this encryption before. On the coordinates that led us here. Only... This time it points to hundreds of places all over the galaxy. What is it, Captain? Our tribe. Whatever this message meant, one thing was sure. We thought reaching this place was the final objective of our mission. Instead, it was only the beginning. Okay. Just awesome. <clears throat> Okay, so, so let me get this straight. <clears throat> so there's thousands of points that it's, it references, so potentially thousands of solar systems that it sent this message to, or sent this, this these coordinates of, right? Um, and it's a, it's a race to get, get here, maybe. Maybe a, a technological race, I'm guessing who can be the most technologically advanced and who can get there first. Um, <clears throat> so evidently we weren't the first if, if there was this like weapon mounted on the outside. So somebody had reached here first, mounted weapons so that nobody else could get in and then went in and I guess, I don't know if they succeeded. Maybe they haven't succeeded or haven't succeeded yet. Ooh, interesting. Okay. <clears throat> Or, or, here's the other option. Um, somebody arrived before us and realized that it was a horrible trap. <laughs> it's, the, it's the worst thing a race could do is, is explore this inside this gigantic sphere. And so they're trying to protect everyone from opening it up and, and <laughs> destroying the universe or something. <sighs> okay, that's a possibility too. Uh, interesting. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. Open the system maps book and mark the Eye of the Void system with the current system bookmark. Okay. Um, my bookmark is way over there. I'll get it later. Uh, but uh, I think maybe we're done here. Like, do we... I'm guessing we take all this stuff off. It kind of sounds like we're done. Uh, we'll leave it on here. So, we are in... This is, Okay, Eye of the Void. Okay. This is our current system. Move cart R02, analyzing the message from research projects. Here we go. Okay, so uh, research project R02. Here we go. Analyzing the message. Okay. Move it into the awaiting envelope. Here's our awaiting envelope. Take the top card from tutorial deck A, research project card R01. Okay, here's this one. And move this card to the awaiting envelope. Okay. Crew is now returning to ISS Vanguard, and you're about to learn about the second major part of the game, ship management. First, let's see 
how well you did in the tutorial. If you have a unique discovery, one, gain one success. Okay. Awesome. Subtract one success for each crew member currently injured. Okay, we, we don't have any injured ones. Okay. Is your total result one or less? Uh, total result? Oh, of maybe success tokens? Is there a back icon? I don't know what the total result is. Okay, there we go. Okay, all right. Here's, here's where I messed up. Uh, count your successes. Okay, two, four, six, eight. Okay, subtract one for each crew member that's currently injured. Do not actually remove them, so we still have eight. Is your result one or less? No. Is your total result two or three? No. <clears throat> you did great. Are you currently new to ISS Vanguard? You avoid injuries and gathered a lot of success. However, keep in mind the upcoming plans will keep ramping up the difficulty. Don't let your guard down. Give me to the shower. If you did not dis gain unique discovery one during planetary exploration, gain it now and place it in the found discovery space indicated on the top edge of the planet board. <clears throat> Note, you are only gaining it now because it's a tutorial. During the campaign, you will not simply be given things that you miss. You must search the planet and find things, okay? <clears throat> okay, so now we gotta do tutorial cleanup on page 24 of the rule book. <clears throat> okay, so clean up cards and dice. Move any section dice from the table to their appropriate section compartments. Return all turn tokens, time tokens, start tokens, minis, markers, injury dice, and danger dice to the game box. <clears throat> okay, so I think all these dice go with the, in the sections. <clears throat> We've we removed, turn, put all the minis back in place. Remove all section cards that were used in the tutorial, along with tutorial event cards. So these are section cards, right? <clears throat> Remove them from the game. Okay, tutorial cards, tutorial entry cards, tutorial mission cards, and tutorial global condition card from the game. Place all P00 card, nothing interesting, both from the planet board and the POI pile to points of interest, card tray A. Remove all their POI cards from the planet board and POI pile from the game. Okay, <clears throat> so these stay. Components check. At this point, the only components on your table should be the open planetopia with your success tokens, discoveries, rank up card, crew car boards with crew member cards and your reference cards. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I found the current system marker, so I added that. I wonder if I can adjust the other way. Oh yeah, right here. This looks better. Cool. That's awesome, actually. It shows the Vanguard right there in the system. Huh. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so at this point, the only components at your table should be the Open Planetopedia with your success tokens. Okay, Discoveries, Rank Up Card, Pick up card, crew boards with crew cards, and your reference cards, okay? Crew boards with crew cards, and my reference cards. Oh, these, these guys still need to be up. 
Okay. Promote crew members. Since the rank up card was flipped to the completed side during planetary exploration, all crew members in the away team rank up. Replace their rank one sleeve with a rank two sleeve, placing their card back on the crew board. Place the rank one sleeves back in the appropriate section compartments. Oh, cool. Okay. Rank up sleeves. We need rank two sleeve for Amir. Good job, Amir. You're getting promoted, buddy. what that means exactly but good job all right so this goes back in here gets rank up sleeve and i probably won't step through this exactly in future playthroughs um, this is just our first time so we're, we're going to go through it real slow just to figure out what's going on Okay, all right, we've, we've ranked up and we put them back in. Okay. Buy dice. You can use your success tokens to buy an additional dice for each section. The cost of this is one success token for each die in a section currently has. Okay, all sections will always have the same number of dice. section the cost to do this is one success token for each die in a section for each die a section currently has all sections will always have the same number of dice buying dice in this way adds one new die to each section because each section currently has five dice the cost is five success tokens okay if you have that many return five success tokens to the box and add the following dice from the game box to the corresponding section components. Heck yeah, dude. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now we, we add all these. Like the Vanguard one. Oh my gosh. This one has a Vanguard as the main success. Two Vanguards. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So there's two, three baddies and then three good. That is cool. Okay, so that goes in engineering. Cool. Awesome. Congratulations, you've reached the end of the ISS Vanguard tutorial. Please remember that additional rules and elements to the game, such as ship management, leads, discoveries, threats, landers, and more will be revealed as you, your campaign progresses. Whenever you wish to review the rules, see the full rules part of this, of this rule book, chapter three. If you wish to continue your campaign immediately after this tutorial, Go to the next section, continuing the campaign. Otherwise, go to the resetting your game procedure on 41 to prepare your game for future playthroughs. Good luck on your voyages. Sweet. This has been a very long episode. Um, I think we'll stop here. We'll do the ship, uh, um, the s ship section, the s ship part of this uh, next episode, and then we'll continue the campaign from there. So, ah. Uh, I've had a blast. This is such a cool game. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really hoping that I can play this fairly often so that this is kind of a normal offering on this channel, but um, anything goes at this point. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.